If you've been struggling to follow along all of the new features that have been released in Microsoft Teams, I totally feel you. So today I'm gonna to be sharing all of my favorite tips and tricks to help you schedule a Teams meeting like a pro. So let's get to it, y'all. Welcome back to my third collab video with ASAP. I am so glad that you are here. If you are new to me, my name is Melissa Peoples. I am an executive assistant, coach, and trainer. I am a productivity coach, and I'm the executive operations advisor at the New York Times. And today, we are gonna be talking all about Microsoft Teams. So let me just say, as a certified Microsoft trainer, I can tell you that even I am trying to catch up with all of the new features that have been released in Microsoft Teams. So today we are gonna focus specifically on scheduling and running meetings. This is really all the things that we do as administrative professionals and we're gonna deep dive into some tips and tricks um, and just kind of some of the new fun stuff that is out there. So I am so excited for this one and I cannot wait to get started. So let's talk a little bit about scheduling and systematizing the way that we work. Now I know most of us are not doing two out of the basic for because of COVID, we are really kind of not doing expenses and travel. And this is such a great opportunity for us to focus on areas of the business like intentional meeting management, like making sure that meetings are systematized and everybody has a very clear place to go and they know how meetings are being run, why we are all at home and, you know, trying to live in 2021. So this is a great opportunity for you to level up your skills when it comes to scheduling meetings in teams. One of the things that I want to highlight here is that as we are focusing on scheduling meetings specifically in teams, the one thing that is really different with all of us working remotely is that teams is so incredibly dynamic. There is so much functionality that is available to us before, during, and after our meetings, the collaboration is there. If we can all encourage our teams to adopt best practices, it really is driving productivity and efficiency while everyone is struggling to find that right now in the middle of, you know, the world. So I'm so excited to be sharing some of these expert tips. Um, so let's get to the computer and let's get to it. Let's talk about meeting options. So this is where we all live as administrative professionals. And I'm so excited that Microsoft Teams has finally upgraded some of this in our uh, new functionality. So most of us are kind of already managing it this way. You click on a Teams meeting and then you can click down here and go to meeting options. Now it's gonna open this up for us and we have all of our meeting information that we can modify. Now, before when this was Skype for Business, it used to be at the very top of our screen, but now that we're using Teams, you can either schedule a meeting and work with the options either in Outlook or directly in Teams. So for this, I just kind of want to show you a couple of things. All of this information is really going to determine on what type of meeting you have, how formal or, or, or informal it is. So for example, this is a really key one, I think. You can really determine who gets to bypass the lobby. If you're running a minute late or whatever's happening, people can get in. If not, if you choose this one, then everyone will sit in a lobby until you get there. The other one that I think might be a little bit interesting is people seem to either love this or hate this, that if you have this turned on, it will announce when callers join or leave. A lot of times people can find that super distracting in big meetings, but sometimes they really enjoy it in small meetings. So it's really kind of whatever is your company culture. So this one I think is really interesting. If you have specific people, let's say that you have an all hands and you only want a few people to have the opportunity to present, this is a great one. The one thing that I do wanna call out is if you notice, I cannot choose anyone yet because I haven't sent the meeting. Once I send the meeting, I can come back here and identify two or three people. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, and then of course the mute or unmute and chat. The wonderful thing is Microsoft has finally enabled us to actually manage these in a meeting, which has been fabulous because that's been something that I know has been a struggle for many of us. Okay, so let's go back to Outlook and I'm actually going to send the meeting now and then I'm gonna come back here and refresh it. And then I'm gonna click on here under who can present and I'm gonna say specific people. And now I can see the participants that I just invited. 
So I'm gonna select him and, and hit save. And now when the meeting happens next week, um, both the organizer and the person that you have selected or persons will be able to present in the meeting. All right, so what I want you to notice is right here, this ellipsis at the top. Now this is brand new, you haven't been able to do this, so thank you, Microsoft. I can actually click on it now. And then right here under meeting options, I can manage all of this even um, during a meeting. So, so excited that they've done that. Okay, now this next tip I am so, so excited about. Before I moved here to Texas, I spent almost 20 years interpreting for the deaf at my church, and I love that Microsoft has now enabled closed caption in their meetings. So to get there, if you click here on the ellipsis, and then down here on the bottom, you can actually turn on live captions. Now I have, not only am I passionate because of that experience, but also I know so many people who are hard of hearing, they are not always comfortable sharing. So I think that this is just a really great thing for us to get used to so that we can be super inclusive. So if you click on live captions, if you notice here on the top left, it's going to say live captions are on. And then I think it does a really good job, if you notice here down on the bottom, it does a really good job of capturing. There's not a lot of flubs. So it's just a really great tool. I think it's great for us to be inclusive and really think about this. And it is so easy to make sure that we are making meetings accessible for everyone. Now, I will say this is something that your administrator needs to turn on. But generally, um, if they haven't done so, just a quick call to IT. And it's just a really quick flip of the switch. Okay, another thing on the ellipsis that I really like is let's just say that you need to quickly grab the meeting details. You need to get a link. So you can go down here under meeting details and it's going to open up all the information. You can copy this link if you want to, but there's another really great way to get someone to join. So let's just pretend here. So I know it's not time for the meeting, but let's just say it is. I can actually click on here and have a request to join. Now, this is going to call him and be like, hey, I need you to come to the meeting. I should actually stop that because he's probably like, why are you inviting me to a meeting today? <laughs> but this will actually call him and let him know that, hey, I really need you to get to this meeting. So it's a really great way if you've ever had someone show up late, this is just a really great way to kind of remind them and ask them to join. All right, so let's say that you're in the meeting and you realize that you forgot to add someone. So you can really quickly just type in their name right here. And I'm gonna click on there and it's going to invite him to this meeting. And because I added him directly, it is going to go ahead and call him as well. But if you just need to grab the link, then you can click on the ellipsis and go to meeting details and then just copy the link and send it to someone. So really great and easy way to get people to actually join your meetings. We have some participants who have joined our meeting and I wanna show you some of the participant features. On the very top, you can click on the participants ellipsis and this actually allows you to do a couple things. You can click on this top one if you are in a little bit more of a formal meeting and you don't want people to unmute because Lord knows we have all been there. Then the other one that I actually really like is you can mute everyone if people, you know, their dogs are barking or like life is just happening and you can't hear. This is just a really simple, easy way for you to go ahead and mute everyone. Now, I will say that they have to be an attendee. So if you haven't set up your options, that's something you definitely want to think through when you're scheduling uh, a little bit more formal meetings. The other one that I really like is you can now download attendance lists. Let's just say that you have an all hands or staff meeting and you wanna know who showed up. What you do is you just click on the download attendance list. It's gonna let you know down here that it's downloading. You can open it right up. It's going to show you who joined. So let's just open this so everybody can see the information. You can see who joined um, or if they, you know, when did they leave or if they if they never showed up, and then all of the timestamps. Now you may or may not eat it, but I still think it's a really cool option. 
All right, some of the other participant features that I really like, let's just say that I need to make someone a presenter in the meeting. So all you have to do is hover over their name, there'll be an ellipsis on the right, click on that, and then I can make them a presenter right away. And then I can hit change, and now he can automatically do whatever he needs to do. He can present, take over, all of that good stuff. If I wanted to make him an attendee again, same thing, and make an attendee. So really easy way to do that. If you want someone to focus in on a speaker and not switch back and forth, if it's a little bit more of a formal meeting, you can actually, so I'm gonna hover over this one and I'm gonna click on Spotlight. And what that allows is everyone in the meeting is going to see that person's video. So I'm gonna say Spotlight. And so now it's just one person and then everyone else will be tiled down here on the bottom versus everybody having equal space on the screen. So that's a great tool if you have a, you know, a little bit of a larger group. And the other thing that you can see is I can't hover over it, but you can see right down here is it shows that that person is um, spotlight. But if you wanna take it off, you can say stop spotlighting. So really easy way to kind of highlight and determine where you want everyone's focus to be. Next tip, it's all about meeting notes. Now, if you are an avid OneNote user and your team, I need to highlight your team are avid OneNote users and you have systematized at your work where meeting notes will be, then I actually really like utilizing OneNote for this. However, if your team is not quite there yet and they don't have a centralized place, then you don't have to worry. Teams already has one for you. So most of us would go ahead and click this. But again, if your team is not, everyone is not using OneNote, this can be problematic. So one easy way is just to go to Teams and inside every single meeting, you can click on the top and it is very simple right here. It says meeting notes and you can click right down here and take notes. Now this will take notes and put it into the actual meeting, it's so, so easy. So let's say for this, I am gonna talk about our social media planning. Now, if you are an EA that is managing your content here, then it's a great way to kind of connect agendas. Again, I have best practices if you're utilizing OneNote to do that, but if your team's not there yet and you just wanna start them off small, you can do that here. So right here, you can just really easily just take, you know, I don't know, let's just say example one, example two. And then if you wanted to add another topic, you just have to hover down here and add a new, sec a new section. And then we can say, I don't know, whatever it is that you want, you can have all the information here and people can come in here and take notes and share. If you hover over here on the ellipsis, if you decide, oh, you know what, I really don't like that, you can discard it, it's going to give you a warning, you can go ahead and say yes. Let's say that you decide that you want the social media planning topic to go on the bottom, you can just click the ellipsis and just simply move it down. Let's just say that we want to have a poll in our meeting. So I can go ahead and create a poll. I'm gonna click on the plus icon and then click on forms. And now I can hit add and it's going to create a poll and I'm gonna hit save. Okay, so I'm gonna click on create a new poll. Okay, so I'm going to just throw some ideas out here. I don't know, ask people if they wanna share their best tips in Q2. You can say yes, no, or maybe. Whatever it is that you want to add, you can just really easily kind of throw this poll in and then hit save. And now everybody can really easily just click on here and kind of say what they want. Okay, now that you have saved your poll, you can launch it. Now you can either edit it, you can delete the poll, but I'm gonna hit launch. And now anyone who joins my meeting is gonna be able to answer this poll in the meeting. So if you notice down here on the bottom, I got a notification, I'm going to click on it, and then I'm gonna say, yes, I do, and submit vote. Now you can also make this completely anonymous. It's in the settings um, when you're creating it. So it's just a really easy way to manage engagement. 
All right, now that we already have the poll in our meeting, you can just simply click on the top in the meeting and it will open it up right here on the right hand side. And you can either create a new one, you can review this, the results. It's just an easy way to actively engage your team during the meeting. It's a great way to make sure that they are participating with you. Okay, now my meeting is over and I wanna show you where you can find all the content that you need to either before or after your meeting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm in Microsoft Teams and I'm gonna click over here on chat. And if you notice, this is kind of our most recent chat. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is that I have all of this information connected to this meeting. This is what is so dynamic about Teams is that it helps the conversation keep going both before and after the meeting. There is a lot of ways that you can utilize this so that it is very dynamic. So everything that I need to the meeting, once it's been created, it has a chat that you can contact your team members before the meeting ever starts. If I want to upload a pre-read, so let's just say that I would like my team members to look at a deck before they show up. And so all you have to do is um, click on share. I'm gonna click OneDrive, but you could choose upload from my computer. And then I'm gonna choose this one right here. Okay, so I have been able to upload my deck that I want them to check out before the meeting. There is also um, another file that people can see. If I wanted to make any notes prior to the meeting, I could, I don't know, click on here and then say, So I can make comments if I want to. It's just a really collaborative space, um, including my whiteboard and my polls. The thing that's important to remember is that Teams is created for us to be really dynamic with one another. So the conversation doesn't have to stop with the meeting. You don't have to start a new email or a new thread. All you have to do is simply go back to your chat and then talk to your team members about that content right here. And they're the only ones who are gonna have access to it. So it is an amazing tool to make sure that everyone is staying collective and collaborative together. Okay guys, so I hope that you have enjoyed these tips and tricks with Microsoft Teams. There is so much more content that is out there and so much more functionality. We haven't even touched the surface yet, but I hope this has given you a leg up and really kind of helped you to see all of the tools, tips and tricks that is available to you when running a meetings in Teams. So I would love to hear if you would comment below on what was your favorite tip and trick or maybe share one with the community. If you're interested in seeing more content like this, I would love it if you followed me on my YouTube channel right over here at Admin Gurus. But until then, and until I see you on our fourth collab, I will see you guys soon and go crush it, y'all. Bye.